Welcome to Friday's edition of Renew. I'm Pastor Tony Cowan. Thanks for joining us and let's get right to the point today. We're going to go back over to the book of Ephesians chapter 2 again. We'll be over there in just a couple of minutes. We are finishing up two weeks talking about the reality of God's graciousness. The fact that He is gracious and that He desires and does deal with us, relate to us according to His grace. And that's something we have to trust in. That's something we have to believe and trust in His heart to do. It's not by our works, it's by His grace. And throughout the New Testament, you find that reality over and over and over and over again. Now, let's look here in Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to go back to verse 6. We read 4 through 7, I think, yesterday. But we're going to go back to verse 6 again. And it reads, And He has raised us up together, that's with Jesus, and has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And again, I pointed out the Amplified says we've been given joint seating with Jesus at God's own right hand, that place of God's divine favor. You say, well, how in the world did that happen? I mean, Jesus, he was good enough. He deserved it. He did all these good things. He should be there, but I shouldn't. Well, Jesus got there by earning it, but you get in on his merit. That means it's according to his grace towards us. In fact, that's the only way you're going to get there. That's the only way you're going to receive salvation. It's the only way you're going to be able to relate to God and have a right standing with him and have his blessing in our life is through that avenue of grace. And see, that's one thing we need to learn in life, that God has more than enough grace toward us, but we have to trust Him, we have to believe Him, we have to, have, have to exercise faith in that grace. Now verse number 7, it says, that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches, now notice that, the exceeding riches of His free grace in His kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Now see, in the ages to come, I believe that started in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. In fact, they got a glimpse over it in the Old Testament. Abraham found out about it. David saw into it. Other people saw it. But I tell you, when Jesus was ascended up into heaven and took, at the, uh, took his seat at the right hand of God, then all of a sudden that made that available for all of us. At that point in time, I believe he began to demonstrate and show the exceeding riches of his grace, his free grace and kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Jesus. Now, verse number eight says it this way. We didn't read this yesterday. So verse eight says, for by by grace you have been saved through faith. So it is God's grace and your faith. And it says, in that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Both salvation and the faith that we use to receive the grace of God both originate from God. God's the originator of all of it. And so we need to understand that it doesn't originate with us. Nothing originates with us. We are receivers. God intended for us to receive the good things that He has planned and, and, and foreordained for us before the foundation of the world. But you have to understand it's all by an avenue of grace that you receive through faith. And then it says in verse number 9, Not of works, lest any man should boast. So we've already established that right there. It's not your religious works. It's not your performance. It's not your production that's going to gain God's favor and His blessing in your life. It's all through you believing God, trusting Him, and having faith in His mercy, good, goodness, and graciousness towards us. You know, again, that's, that's just totally against the mindset of the world and a lot of man-made religion right there. All other man-made religions, all of them in the world, and even including a man-made religion has been made out of Christianity. You understand Christianity is not a religion anyway. It's a relationship with God, a restored relationship with God. But you understand that all the other uh, religions of the world try to work their way into salvation. They're all, they have to do something for God. They have to perform. They have to produce. But this is the only true way to get to the true and living God. Our Heavenly Father is through faith in His grace. You know, if he, uh, f uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9 says that, you know, we shouldn't be all caught up in, in rules and regulations and religious rules and order. 
as much. Now, that doesn't mean we're lawless, of course, but that's not the basis for us relating to God. It said that our heart should be established in grace. Our hearts should be established in grace. In other words, we, have, we should have a grace-based life. In other words, everything that I'm receiving from God, my relationship with God, all, matter, all, all has to do, all founded on, originated with God through His grace. Now, in verse number 10, big verse right here, it says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, there's where, that's where the good works come in. Only after God does His workmanship inside of us, in the new birth, in the new creation, His good work in us, then we can do the good works. Our good works do not produce a good work in us. No, it's God's grace that produces a good work in us. So see, grace is not just some kind of, uh, you know, pie in the sky type fantasy world. Grace is God working in our life, doing for us, doing in us what we could not do ourselves. We couldn't do enough good works to change our nature. So God in His grace provided a way and did that in the new birth. And so we need to understand that right there. Now, a lot of people say, well, I know that a lot of people are using this as a license to sin. Well, I know in liberty, true liberty, there's always a risk. People can misuse and abuse the grace of God. But you know what? When you really, truly understand that God's grace is a work that He did in my life, He changed my nature, changed the core of my being, changed my heart, and now I can do the good works that He foreordained and planned beforehand that I should walk in them, then I really understand the grace of God working in my life every single day. Well, that's all the time I've got for today. I wish I had more time, and that's all the time we got for this week. Join us next week, and if you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org.